It's with pleasure that I will show you one of my latest creations, The Dancing White Man. A hyper-realistic self-portrait, a classic sculpture that I made with the help of professionals. The best in the field. I invited Edwin Dateen, a high-tech technician, who will say something about his experience during the work on this project. First, I will give you some insight into the type of artwork I create. Most of my work is about my lusts, my dreams, my feelings, my desires, memories. The work I make is like the subjects in a diary. The objects and installations are site-specific, meaning the surrounding of the work is part of the work itself, and this influences the way you will experience it. Experience it. Experience it. Experience it. Experience it. it, 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 it. Well, sometimes you love technique, sometimes you hate it. <laughs> Hope this thing works. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, I love technique. <laughs> but first, maybe I can uh, show uh, some work uh, I make and you, you get an insight. Uh, one of the uh, installations I like to show uh, that give a good impression of site-specific work is uh, Under Heaven 2. It's uh, built in a desolated place in Amsterdam. It's under the highway and uh, you have a space 3,000 square meters. It's cold and kill in there, but you have to go in there if you want to go to the other side of the city. So I built a sort of uh, Fata Morgana or a Mirage, uh, complete with palm trees, uh, banana trees, and even a waterfall springing from a mountain uh, rock. And what I like about this place is that if you enter the tunnel, you won't see the work yet because the, the, the poles will cover the work. Only if you, in the middle of the tunnel, and in front of the work, then you see the, the work in total. And um, yeah, that, that effect only uh, uh, makes it stronger, the feeling of uh, Fata Morgana or uh, Mirage. Because uh, yeah, I can imagine uh, swimming around with a nice girl, uh, lay on the beach and uh, cool off under the waterfall, but it's uh, impossible to reach this place because there's a, a big iron fence around and everything is made out of plastic. Well, I also built things you can uh, visit. For example, under heaven one. Here I built on a 50 meter high building, uh, a tree house. I put a tree up, up there and you could visit me and had a really nice view over Amsterdam. <laughs> and if you, maybe you recognize the feeling eh, when you were young, sitting in a hut, and now you look down and you see small people running around, even an ambulance is making its way through the traffic. But the problem seems minor when you're young. And um, yeah, that's, that's sometimes a good feeling, but now you grow up, you can realize things and um, make them happen. Uh, for example, uh, a few months ago, I uh, remade or I made fireworks. It goes all night long, every night. And uh, still you can see it every night if you uh, like to go out to the west, <laughs> Amsterdam. And you can also see it uh, driving in your car uh, on the highway uh, of Amsterdam. It's a sort of a love declaration in love, in light. And then the city theater asked me, can you build something for us here in, in, in the theater? And I was thinking about a statue, but not a statue made out of uh, brick, but more a statue that is modern from this age, from this time. So I thought, well, why not make a statue that can actually move? So I built a sort of, I bought a sort of Santa Claus and I undressed him 
and um, hey, maybe, what maybe, you maybe, maybe we can try to get it on. Hey, Slick Chick, what you drinking? Yeah. Give and me something out to keep this fair. All righty, Lord of mercy. So hear me no soup, hear me no okay. star. You come ball. and this a dance, you make no war. You buy out the bar. Are you free buy out? Well, and then I thought, I'm not, not really a technician. So then I found Edwin Dertin, and I showed him this model. And I asked, what do you think about this? Can we, can we do something? I, I like to make something that can move. And, and I know you have to use technique, but I don't want it to be a robot. So I, I never used the, the word robot for this sort of stuff. But it's more sort of, why not make a self-portrait? Well, mm -hmm. yes, and that's uh, where I came in. And I'm, I'm trained as a control engineer. So I basically like to be in control of every movement of robotics, but if you let robot or control engineers build robots, then you'll have machines that walk like, like this. And yeah. it was definitely not uh, what uh, 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 Leonard uh, wanted. So I had to make a statue or a robot that actually uh, was losing control. So doing control without control. And, and actually, this, this, this um, doll was a great example because it does a lot of movement with just one motor. And, and the basic component inside one of those, this, this doll, basic, the basic behavior, it's, it's one of a, a spring. So that's why we started think, tinkering with a spring yeah, like to yeah. bounce as sort of basic component for the robot. And, and even in, in the last robot that we have here, the heart, literally the heart of the robot, is this uh, spring, this coiled spring, what you see here. I think movements also ha have to come from the heart. Eh? So that's good that he placed a spring inside. Then um, another difficult thing for uh, at building robots um, is, um, well, engineering is kind of difficult. And difficulties lies in that you have every possible solution, every possible technique at your disposition. And then you have a limited time, limited money budget, and you have to build something. Actually, building with Lego or building with building blocks makes makes life really easy. So, so the first first prototypes you see them here. The first prototypes we used for well trying out some ideas. Um, we made them simply using Lego, and that gave gave the idea like okay, let's find our own building blocks mm -hmm. or building language for for building this robot. So that was the first prototype after the Lego. Was this one? made out of wood, and, well, it can move a lot. Yeah, if you, you make one movement, he automatically triggers the other one. You see the knees, they are coupled to the shoulders, shoulders are coupled to the hips, so as soon as you start moving one thing, the whole robot sort of starts to wriggle and, and dance, or, well, at least it wriggles. Um, so that was a sort of starting point for the real robot then. Yeah. And what, 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 what I liked about the, the, this sort of things is that it's a sort of uncontrollable. So I asked him, can you just me make one move and then p turn the power off, something like that. And then at random, he makes another move and pick it up from there and then start from there again. So then you use technique, but you also use coincidence. And that, that's very important in, in, in this last version also. Yeah. And that's where we ended up with, or at least I ended up with another different, very different sort of problem. Um, because I can make robots, I can make things that move, I can, well, now try and make things that are moving uncontrollable. Um, but then I'm not a very good dancer, and, and well, it is his art artwork, not mine. Um, so we had to come up with uh, something that allowed Leo to teach this robot to dance. Um, I, I even sent a, a video, I hope he's destroyed it. Yes, I destroyed it. I put the video in here <laughs> and I start dancing. I only dance on reggae because I really like that. And, <laughs> and, I, and then you, you know the feeling, you send something and then you say, shit, shit. And already yes, he got and it. I had to view those <laughs> videos multiple times and make notes like, okay, he's moving his knees like this. But <laughs> and then we had conversations like, but yes, but when I dance, I also move the shoulder like that. Can you implement that too? So, um, well. I think uh, the, the next, next sh uh, slide shows how you learned this robot to dance. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I almost forgot. Yeah. Inside view in your studio. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so we had a sort of, uh, how do you call that, a feather? It's a, a MIDI, it's basically a MIDI control panel. Uh, you see a lot of them for Pips Lab later on. Uh, those MIDI control panels, they are normally used in music, but are, are used for controlling music. So we're, we're building a musical robot. <laughs> it makes sort of sense to use musical uh, interface. What do you say? That is, that's the move you hear. It's, a, it's a voice again in the computer. <laughs> uh, maybe we, we have to try out if it works. Because uh, what was nice that, that uh, I got a sort of uh, control panel, and every fader had a movement. So I, I could really play with it and put some music on, and, and try how it, how it will react and now let it go. Maybe. So, yeah, as, as a lesson for me, that was also pretty nice, not to design a robot as a robot that's, well, complete and, and, and the thing, but the robot more or less as a tool which he could use for training and learning uh, or making dance moves. Yeah. Actually, this was the sort of prototypes you see, and the actually uh, built robot, uh, I now to do it myself, <laughs> modern statue that can even swing. <laughs> yeah, it's not a robot, it's a statue. Uh, is actually downstairs uh, in the Stadtschau. If you Schauburg. arrived early today, they hadn't plugged it out yet, so it was playing reggae music all the time. Yeah, and you can visit it whenever you want, uh, as long as it... Uh, uh, it starts to dance if you dance in front of it, so it detects movement, and you have to dance quite frantic frantically to, to, well, in order to make this yeah. robot do something. And, 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 and yes, we placed hidden cameras that are capturing the audience. No, never mind. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I can. Uh, we have one idea now with the, with the crisis and that sort of stuff, and also with if you are an artist, it's hard nowadays. So we're thinking about placing how do you call that? Uh, yes, a coin machine. A coin machine. <laughs> <laughs> so play but to pay for the uh, maintenance maybe, maybe budget. Maybe you can <laughs> try to get them on. Or, or yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's make it work. I, I don't no? dance with myself. Maybe if, if you do a little bit like this, a move, then we can try to, to get him on. Because he only reacts if, if you get in touch with him. Uh, that's <laughs> the way it works. Do you think? Actually, it, it, it dances the same way like me. Life was a thing that the money couldn't buy. Rich will ever live and the poor will ever die, you know? Yellow man and fat it come for testify. I must say gotta make it a try, you know? I oh, want sexy style. Life was a thing, money could I buy. Rich money live, poor would I die? I can't take it. No. No, 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 I can't take it. No. No, 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 no. The rich man, a poor man, a bigger man, tea. But the lawyer, a doctor, a Indian tea. But the rich man, a poor man, a bigger man, tea. Lawyer, a doctor, a Indian tea. Life was a thing, money could I buy. Rich would I live, poor would I die. But everywhere you go, you hear the poor man, a guy, I can't take it. No. No, 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 I can't take it. No. No, 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 no. Everywhere we go, the poor man cry. Thank you. <laughs>